So many of us are looking to reduce oxidative stress inside of our bodies, improve energy production, control inflammation, improve our gut health. And rather than just turning to a pill to swallow in order to get some of these benefits, there are other types of compounds out there that can deliver just as much therapeutic value. This is a series on therapeutic gases and how they affect our body. And in this video, we're gonna be covering hydrogen gas and what the therapeutic value of hydrogen gas is. Are there any risks to hydrogen gas? And how do we gain access to hydrogen gas safely and effectively? In our last video, we covered oxygen as a gas and nitrogen as the gas, and that those gases are in our atmosphere already and we're breathing them in regularly. And then are there additional modalities or tools that we can use to drive higher levels of oxygen and higher levels of nitrogen? Well, hydrogen's also found in our environment, but at a very, very low percentage. It's not even worth considering hydrogen in our environment from a therapeutic value. It literally makes up 0.00005% of atmospheric gases, so this is not part of the conversation. We do not get hydrogen from our atmosphere. So where do we get most of the hydrogen in our body? Well, there's two main ways. One is we break down a lot of carbon and hydrogen backbone as fuel sources. In other words, glucose and fatty acids, compounds that we're using for fuel are literally carbon and hydrogen backbones. And part of the metabolic process is breaking those carbon and hydrogen bonds in order to extract energy. And we use oxygen to do that, which is why the production of energy in our body is called oxidative phosphorylation. We use oxygen to oxidize our fuel and to extract cellular energy from the fuel that we're eating. And as a result, these carbon and hydrogen bonds are broken and carbon is often removed from our body through CO2 as one of those waste products. And hydrogen is often then bound to oxygen molecules and carried out as water. But this is one of the sources of hydrogen in our body. But our main source of hydrogen in our body really comes from our gut bacteria. So having a healthy microbiome, as many of you already know, is critical on so many levels from immune system function to digestion for a healthy amount of hydrogen gas to be released inside of our body for all the different reactions that hydrogen is used for. The benefits of hydrogen include a healthy and more balanced microbiome. It includes more efficient ATP production and mitochondrial function, which is critical for energy production and cellular function. Hydrogen gas also helps to reduce inflammation and reduce oxidative stress. And this might be one of the most important benefits of increasing your hydrogen gas exposure as a therapeutic benefit. There's two main ways hydrogen shows up in our body. Hydrogen as an atom, in other words, a single hydrogen molecule, which might be represented as H+. And molecular hydrogen, which is two hydrogen molecules bound together, H2. Similar to oxygen and nitrogen, oxygen is naturally found as O2 in our environment, and that's the type of oxygen that we're using for fuel. Nitrogen is found as N2, two nitrogen molecules found together. Hydrogen gas also found naturally in the environment, and hydrogen gas that we're gonna be using therapeutically is predominantly H2, two hydrogen molecules bound together. Atomic hydrogen, or a single hydrogen atom, inside of our body has much more to do with pH balance. And hydrogen is used on the pH scale and the higher levels of H plus that we have in our body, the more acidic we are. Hydrogen atoms are also used in the electron transport chain where energy production occurs. And we take these protons, these hydrogen ions, and we use the hydrogen ion gradient in order to create cellular energy inside the mitochondria. As far as this video goes, we're gonna be more concerned with H2, molecular hydrogen, the effect that that has on our body, and then ways to get more molecular hydrogen into our bodies. One of the most significant roles that H2 is gonna play in your body is as a selective antioxidant. Now, the term selective antioxidant seems to confuse a lot of people. We have had a decent amount of comments about that term in the YouTube channel. And it's not that the hydrogen molecule is making decisions, selectively saying, well, I'm gonna reduce you or I'm gonna reduce you. What it means is that there's some stability to the H2 molecule. And so it's not going to reduce any molecule that comes by. That H2 molecular bond has some strength to it, meaning it's only going to break that bond and reduce very strong oxidants. And so it's selective in that it's not just easily reacting to every free radical that it comes across. It's really only reacting to very strong oxidative stress. So hopefully that helps clear up the term selective antioxidant. There seems to be a lot of confusion out there around hydrogen. So I'm going to do my best to answer a handful of the questions and comments that we've gotten in the past around hydrogen. 
Another question that we've gotten is, how do you enrich water with additional hydrogen without changing the composition of the water itself? Water is literally hydrogen and oxygen. It's H2O. There's two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule, and they're bound together to make a molecule of water. So what then is hydrogen water, and how do you not change that chemical composition? This should be viewed as more of a solution of hydrogen water. It's not changing the chemical compound at all. What you're doing is you're taking water, just like you might take water and some salt and mix that together. The salt doesn't change the water molecular composition. You've dissolved salt in the water or sugar, and you mix that into the water. You're not changing the chemical composition of the water. You're dissolving a solute in the solvent. You could view this the same way, or even carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas that's being driven into the water. So you put CO2, carbon dioxide, into the water, but you haven't changed the chemical compound of the water itself. You've dissolved the gas inside the water. And so that's what we're doing here is we're taking hydrogen, additional hydrogen, H2, and we're dissolving that and creating a solution of hydrogen inside the water, dissolving a gas into the water itself without changing the chemical compound at all. And so hopefully that clarifies that we're not trying to change the chemical compound, and we certainly aren't changing the chemical compound of the water itself. Another question that we get is, well, can't we just use hydrogen peroxide to have a similar effect? So why would somebody say that? Somebody might say that because we're using hydrogen peroxide, the chemical compound is H2O2. So chemically, what is that? H2O2 means that we added an additional oxygen molecule to the water, and we did change the chemical structure of the water itself. Water is H2O, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. And so that is a totally different compound and has changed the chemical structure of the water. It is no longer water, it is now hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide has a completely different effect on our cellular function, on our biology, than H2O or H2 dissolved in H2O. I know that on some level this gets kind of confusing from a chemical structure standpoint, but I'm just trying to deliver the information as simply as I can so that you understand that hydrogen water is a very specific therapeutic tool and that there are some confusing aspects and hopefully this is helping to answer some of those questions. Another comment that we've gotten is that inhaling hydrogen gas is very dangerous. Specifically, one comment that said inhaling hydrogen is stupid and dangerous and inhaling it could kill you very fast. First of all, we're not talking about breathing 100% hydrogen. That would be dangerous and dangerous on a lot of levels. What we're talking about is inhaling hydrogen or infusing water with hydrogen at very, very low concentrations, which number one, are safe to consume, and number two, still very therapeutically valuable even at these low concentrations. We'll talk more about the dosages later on in the video. But additionally, they've used hydrogen gas as a component of a breathing gas for many, many years. In fact, even in deep scuba diving, they used hydrox, which is a hydrogen oxygen mixture, or even hydriliox, which is hydrogen, helium, and oxygen, as breathing gases in deep diving situations. And so we know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, breathing hydrogen gas isn't dangerous and actually has a functional role in certain environments, especially in deep diving, that not only isn't dangerous, but it's making the diving even safer. But again, we're talking about even much lower concentrations of hydrogen from a therapeutic benefit standpoint. Another question we've gotten is, well, why doesn't my body already have optimum levels of hydrogen inside? I think this is a great question. And in fact, this is not unlike so many of the other treatments, modalities, or strategies that we talk about on this channel with regard to, shouldn't we just have the ingredients that we needed in our body in the first place? Well, we know that our food is not as sufficient as it once was. We know that our food sources are often more toxic than they once were. We know that although you're carrying about as much oxygen as you can inside your body, assuming that you have a healthy heart and healthy lungs, you're saturating your red blood cells virtually 100% with oxygen right now, and yet we still choose to eat a certain way to make sure we're getting the right nutrients or take certain supplements to support our diet that might be deficient in certain areas, or use tools like hyperbaric or EWOT to temporarily increase our oxygen levels, even though we're already 100% saturated. So with all of these tools, you might be getting the optimum amount of a certain nutrient or a certain compound even right now, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to temporarily or periodically increase those levels to create or stimulate certain chemical reactions inside your body. 
In addition to that, the majority of the hydrogen that you would normally get would come from your gut bacteria. If you have an optimally healthy gut microbiome, you very well may be getting the optimum range of hydrogen already. However, in many cases, and most of you already know this, we don't have an optimally balanced and functioning gut microbiome. And as a result, that hydrogen level may be lower than it should be, in which case supplementing with hydrogen is a no-brainer. Another comment that we got is that hydrogen and oxygen is explosive. And this comment was made from one of our chemical engineer friends. And I'm sure our chemical engineer friend knows this, but I just want to say it to the rest of the audience. Well, water is hydrogen and oxygen as well, H2O. So it's not just what are the atoms involved, it's in what molecular compounds are they found. And then it's not just in what molecular compounds are they found, it's in what levels and concentrations are they found. I believe it was Paraclesis who is credited with saying, the dose makes the poison. And so with all of these compounds, including things like hydrogen peroxide, as I mentioned earlier, could be used therapeutically and could have a very dangerous effect. And it's all about getting the mixtures and the exposures and the dosages in a safe and effective manner while reducing and mitigating any risks and consequences. So hydrogen is extremely explosive, especially in the presence of oxygen, and especially at concentrations of 10, 20, 30, 50, 70 percent, the chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen is extremely dangerous. We're talking about hydrogen levels at a fraction of that. In fact, even as we talk about it as a therapeutic agent, I much prefer people to drink the hydrogen rather than breathe the hydrogen anyway. But even when we're breathing the hydrogen, it's at a fraction of a percentage than the numbers that would cause it to become explosive and unsafe. And as we dissolve the hydrogen into water, we're talking about dosages of 0.5 to 1.6 milligrams per liter. We're talking about exceptionally low doses of hydrogen that still have exponentially high therapeutic value. So please do not mix high concentrations of hydrogen along with oxygen, because yes, that of course would be very dangerous. That concludes the list of reasonable questions and comments we've gotten so far on hydrogen, and I'm sure from this video we'll have more. However, again, my goal is to really dispel many of the myths and misconceptions around a lot of these therapies, including hydrogen, to make sure that people aren't afraid to use something that could be so meaningful in their health journey. As far as administration and dose, there are basically two ways that we can expose ourselves to hydrogen. You could breathe hydrogen gas directly, or you can infuse hydrogen into water. As far as those two methods go, my preference would be to drink a hydrogen-infused water over direct inhalation of the hydrogen. When it comes to drinking a hydrogen solution, there's a few ways that this can happen. You could take a hydrogen generator and literally bubble and infuse that gas into the water solution. You could use electrolysis, which will actually start breaking the bonds between the water molecules, which again are hydrogen and oxygen. And in this case, to simplify the process, we're breaking the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen. With the electrolysis process, we're using electrodes. There's going to be a cathode and an anode, positive and negatively charged electrodes that are going to be used to break those hydrogen and oxygen bonds. So it's going to break these hydrogen and oxygen bonds, making reactive hydrogen molecules and reactive oxygen molecules that are looking for a nearby friend to attach to. And in the same setup, there's going to be a filtration system for removing the oxygen. So as we remove the oxygen from the solution and we're left with these hydrogen ions, there's an affinity for these hydrogen ions to bind together to create H2 gas. And that's how we can create a hydrogen solution, an H2 solution inside the water. The third way is to use an elemental metal like elemental magnesium. When we put magnesium in water, again, there's a chemical reaction. And in that chemical reaction, it's going to break those same bonds and create an off-gassing of hydrogen. In all three of these versions, the amount of time that the hydrogen gas stays in solution is very limited. And so we can't just make gallons and gallons of hydrogen-infused water and easily store it for lengths of time. We should be making it and ingesting it typically within a three to five minute window. It is possible that aluminum cans and certain glass containers can hold hydrogen gas inside for some period of time. But for most of us, we would be making our hydrogen water and then ingesting our hydrogen water, again, within a three to five minute window to get the maximum effective dose of the solution that we just created. What should the concentration be of that solution? The minimum studied dosage of hydrogen water is 0.5 milligrams per liter of water. And the maximum saturation of hydrogen in water is about 1.6 milligrams per liter. And so the therapeutic dose is somewhere between 0.5 and 1.6 milligrams of hydrogen per liter of water. 
To date, I'm not aware of any toxicity of hydrogen in terms of too high of a dose of hydrogen over a 24 hour period of time. So if somebody were to drink 1.6 milligrams of hydrogen per liter of water a few times a day, we don't have any evidence to support that that's even more therapeutic. And we don't have any evidence to support that there's any danger in consuming that much hydrogen water either. Due to hydrogen size being the smallest molecule known, as well as the length of time it stays in our body, which is typically about 60 minutes after ingesting it, as well as the fact that it's a selective antioxidant, meaning it's not going to over-reduce and cause reduction damage inside of our cells, it appears that we can take in quite a bit of hydrogen at a very safe level. So again, the goal here is just to introduce people to the concept that gases have many therapeutic benefits inside of our body. Nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. We're also going to be covering carbon dioxide and nitric oxide in later videos. And many of these gases either surround us or they're already inside of us. Our body knows exactly what to do and how to handle these different gases and temporarily and periodically increasing the level of these gases inside of our body can have tremendous health benefits. So as always, I thank you for your attention and we'll see you on the next video.